What's going on everybody, it's Joel here, and today we're gonna to be doing the review of the Reebok Nano 13s. All right, so if you haven't watched my initial impressions video of the Reebok Nano 13s, I highly recommend that you check that out before we start this video today. Today, we're gonna to focus on the performance, what I've come to learn from the build quality and materials of this shoe, and just my overall feelings after using this shoe for a full month. These came in the week right after Waterpalooza, or that Monday right after Waterpalooza. I've been using them ever since. I did a lot of lifting early on, kind of didn't really feel like I had enough for a review after two weeks. So I just went straight into like Metcon mode after that. And I've been doing a lot of wads in these, just really trying to get a feel for what they were trying to achieve with the Nano 13. And I think, I think I've come to the conclusion on what this shoe is best made for. But first off, let's talk about the construction of the Nano 13s. And I'm gonna bring out the white pair because in the first impressions, we had the black pair. Uh, they did send me the white pair in a nine and a half. We'll talk about the way that these ones fit a little bit later on, but first off, the construction. So you do have a new flex weave material. They're still calling it flex weave, but it's a more densely woven type material. Uh, it feels pretty taut. The foot containment is good and it still flexes very well. The breathability is also good. So the way that I gather they designed this new flex weave is that there are more densely woven areas in the spots of the shoe that need a little bit more structure. So mainly around the lateral side metatarsals and then around the toe, kind of acting like a toe bumper versus using like some kind of PU overlay or TPU overlay and then all the way through to the medial side of the shoe uh, so that you can get a little bit more durability from rope climbs. The top of the toe box has a slightly lighter woven material that's more perforated. You can kind of see the holes through it and that's for more flexibility in the toe box and just breathability overall. So looking at the ankle collar, there is a more heavy woven material. And then right at the back part where the heel is, instead of having like a turned out heel or anything, there's just a softer material that is at the back part of the shoe. It doesn't rub, it's not uncomfortable, but what I have noticed is that if you're someone like me and you slide your foot into the shoe without unlacing it, I know it's a bad habit, uh, this part will crush in and then the foam will actually bend inside of the material or the ankle collar, and then you'll have to kind of like massage it out. Uh, and that's a little annoyance for me personally because I just, that's the way that I put on my shoes most of the time. So I would recommend that if that's you, don't do that with these shoes. So the tongue on these shoes is not gusseted, but it does form around your ankle pretty well, and it doesn't shift around, doesn't really move around. So even though it's not gusseted, which I wish it was, uh, it's not a big deal with this shoe. So the marquee feature that they added with the Nano 13s is the lift and run chassis. And it's basically this zigzag piece of TPU that runs across the sides of the shoe and then actually in the back of the shoe and then from the back of the shoe that extends into the shoe. And the way that I can illustrate that for you is by just breaking one out for you. Reebok sent me a lift and run chassis to show to you guys. So basically, the sides go into the metatarsals are right where the metatarsals start. And then the TPU piece comes around your, basically the heel of the shoe to stabilize back there when you're doing lifts. And then you have this pod that sits in a bed of float ride foam at the back part of the shoe. Now this is a dome shape so that when you put pressure down on it, it flattens and stabilizes the heel of the shoe. And then when you're not lifting and you're doing some kind of like repetitive bounding movement, maybe running, uh, you get a little pop out of this part of the shoe or it just doesn't really do anything at all. And in my testing, I've noticed that these shoes are very stable, but the run part I'm kind of missing. Uh, I don't really notice this thing doing very much for runs. The shoes to me 
still feel pretty stiff at the heel of the shoe. That being said, there is float ride foam in the Nano 13s. You don't really notice it that much. It's pretty dense and responsive. It's not like the soft float ride that you're gonna find in Reebok's running shoes. And that's exactly what you would want for a training shoe. You wouldn't want them to take the float ride straight out of the float ride runs and throw them into these shoes because that would make for a pretty unstable platform. One of the design changes that I really like about the Nano 13s is the outsole. It's a nearly completely flat contact outsole. There's a slight rocker at the heel. It's very, very small. And then there's a very minimal toe spring angle on these shoes. It's really easy for me at least to get full foot contact in these shoes without my heels picking up when my toes are pressing down and vice versa. That's something that I had issues with on the Nano 11s and the Nano 12s. Less on the 12s than the 11s, but that was one of my biggest annoyances with those shoes. The grip on these shoes is also excellent for gym surfaces. So if you're taking these outdoors, you're probably not gonna get a whole lot of traction and that's you know why they have the adventure line uh, because of that flat contact outsole there's really no lugs here and it's designed to be used on like gym flooring rubber flooring uh, wooden platforms and pretty much all the things that don't really require you to have basically any kind of lug depth a change to the outsole that I didn't really care for is the more minimal toe bumper and the reason for that is I didn't find that these were that great or grippy when doing wall walks. They were okay for doing burpees, but when I was trying to get up the wall, I noticed that my feet would slide around or that I would have to point my toes just a little bit more so that I could climb up the wall doing wall walks. The drop on the Nano 13s is still seven millimeters, but what I did notice with these shoes is that you don't really notice it as much as you did on the 11s and 12s because there's a little bit less foam inside the 13s, or at least to me, it feels like there's less foam in these shoes. The only time that you're really gonna notice the drop on the 13s is if you're coming from a shoe that predates the Nano 11 and Nano 12s, or just a shoe that's flatter in general, like a four millimeter drop, then it's gonna be immediately noticeable. But if you're coming from the Nano 11s or 12s, the 13s are gonna feel much flatter in comparison because of the way that the outsole is shaped this year. The only real negative change that Reebok made to the Nano 13s is the fact that they weigh a considerable amount more than the 11s or 12s or any of the previous Nanos besides the Nano 10. These are pretty much on par in weight with the Nano 10 with a men's size 10 clocking in at 13.6 ounces. This nine and a half didn't really shave off that much either at 13.2 ounces. All right, so here are the stock insoles of the Nano 13 after about one month's wear. And I generally don't really have any complaints about them. I think they're comfortable, breathable, seem to be wearing okay. The singular thing that I dislike about them is that the surface is a little slick. You can see that's a little bit shiny. And depending on the socks that you're wearing, your feet can kind of slide around inside of the shoe because of that. Uh, if there's anything that I would change about the insole, it would definitely be the top layer that they're using. So when it comes to sizing your Nano 13s, I got these in both a 10 and a nine and a half. And the reason for that is because with the Nano 12s and Nano 11s, I had to size those down to a nine and a half besides the special editions of those shoes. With the Nano 13s, I'm gonna recommend that you go with your normal true to size Reebok size. So pretty much everything before the Nano 11 and 12. And I thought that the fit was just better for me overall. Now I did have some issues with heel slip initially. What I would recommend that you do is that you take the laces and you just lace them in the hole that's a little bit further down your ankle. For me, that was enough to alleviate the heel slip on these shoes. You could also do a lace lock with the Nano 13s as well. The Nano 13s in a size nine and a half also do fit me, but the toe box is just a little bit more cramped and I had to wear these around for a little bit before they became more bearable. What I would say is if you had a more narrow foot, then I would go with the size down. Or if you were looking for a more just competition style fit, you didn't really wear your nanos around for more than that hour a day at the gym, 
and I think that that would be fine as well. And for everyone else, I'm gonna recommend that you go with your just normal Reebok true to size fit. The toe box space in these shoes is adequate, but it is not as much as it was with the previous two models. In my opinion, it probably resembles the Nano 10s the most in the way that it's shaped and the way that it feels without the smaller sizing of the Nano 10s. The in-shoe feel is neutral like most training shoes are, and you don't really notice the TPU pressing up against the side of your foot after some wear. These do need a little bit of break-in, but after some break-in, that relaxes and the pressure that's initially there does go away. So if you're coming from a Nike or say strike movement shoe, I would say you're gonna probably wanna go half a size down. If you're coming from Innovates, I'm gonna recommend that you go with your normal, just like Innovate size. If you're coming from Tears, then you're probably gonna go with your normal tier size as well. Same with Rad, you're gonna go with your normal shoe size there. So every year Reebok says, these are the best nanos to run in yet. And I think that they really need to stop saying that because the Nano 13s, even with their lift and run chassis, are not good to run in. These shoes are very unpleasant to run in. It's completely doable. Like if you find yourself having to run 200s, 400s, maybe even max one mile, then I'd say these should be fine. Maybe do that one time a week, you're gonna, be, you're gonna survive. But running in these shoes is generally unpleasant. They're pretty clunky at the heel. They're not super flexible. Like I said, they do require a good amount of breaking in uh, for these to feel like flexible at all or like you're gonna want to even remotely try running in these shoes. The lift and run chassis on these shoes is more of a lift chassis and not so much a run chassis. I didn't really notice it giving me any kind of special bonuses when doing running. Though I will say that after a little bit of break in, I found that these shoes to be better at running than I initially thought they were gonna be. Like when you first put these shoes on, they're gonna feel stiff as heck. Like you're not gonna wanna run in these shoes. But I will say that give it some time try to break them in, they become a little bit easier to live in, uh, but there's no way that I would say that these are gonna be good for running. And also considering the fact that these are pretty heavy shoes, you're definitely not gonna be wanting to use these for any longer distance running. But even with that said, most of the body weight movements that you're gonna find in a typical workout for CrossFit are gonna be fine in these shoes. I thought that they were plenty flexible and plenty responsive. The weight never really bogged me down, even doing multiple burpees or anything like that. I felt like getting down, jumping back to my feet. Uh, my feet were comfortable using these shoes. They were very responsive. Doing box jumps in these shoes was also very stable and also very responsive because of the way that the platform is shaped. So if you're looking for something to do like sprint work, made some line drills. I think the Nano 13s are gonna handle that kind of stuff just fine, even plyometric movements. If you can handle the fact that these shoes just feel a little bit more bulky. But where the Nano 13s really shine is when it comes to lifting. I thought these were one of the best Nanos to lift in in a long time, even probably better than the Nano 10s, which were one of my favorite Nanos to lift in ever. These pretty much resemble that shoe just with a slightly higher heel. And really the higher heel never interfered with any of my lifts. I never felt like it pitched me forward or that it was too high to do deadlifts in. An issue that I had with the Nano 11 and 12s is that I thought that there was a little bit too much foam there and it could make those shoes feel vague when doing some of your heavier lifts, your heavier back squats or deadlifts. With the Nano 13, I never noticed that being an issue. I felt like these were connected to the ground. Like I said before, I was never getting pitched for it. And that was even with deadlifts. I did notice my shin angle was a little bit different in these shoes, but it's not something that would stop me from using these shoes for a heavy deadlift day. When it came to Olympic weightlifting movements, I thought these shoes did excellent. And the reason for that is because it took me almost no effort to find full foot contact in these shoes. One thing that I'm always looking for in a training shoe is how well I can get pressure from my big toe to my heel without tipping one way or the other. With the Nano 13s, I had absolutely no issues doing so. That was one of the biggest issues that I had with the previous two models. It was just 
almost impossible to get full foot contact without rocking too far in one direction. With the Nano 13s, you're gonna feel planted, you're gonna feel stable, toe off is excellent in these shoes. It is a little bit more on the lifty side with a lift and run chassis, so the toe box is not quite as flexible, but it does give you a nice little pop when you're doing your jumping movements in the Nano 13s. Another thing that makes Nano 13s great to lift in is that torsionally, there's not a ton of flex. So when you're doing a high torque movement like Devil's press or dumbbell box step overs, your foot is gonna feel completely secure and planted to the ground in these shoes without a ton of flex side to side. When it came to rope climbs, I thought the Nano 13s did a pretty good job holding the rope. It wasn't the best that I've ever tried, but it also was far from the worst. The grip on these shoes is good. It's not something that I would choose over like the Noble Trainer Plus or the Metcon 8 to rope climb in but I also wouldn't shy away from any kind of rope climb workouts in these shoes. The durability is also improved with the Nano 13s compared to the 11s and 12s, which had a huge issue with rope climb durability. And the reason for that is because they came to like a kind of V shape at the medial side of the shoe. So that part was thin and would just rip off the shoe. With the 13s, the rubber comes up the sidewall of the shoe and it's a nice, thick piece of rubber that is definitely not gonna delaminate from that side because there's really no stress being put on the point that it's glued into. I did see on one of Rich Froning's stories that the rubber was getting chewed away a little bit, but that's to be expected from you know any shoe when you're doing as many rope climbs as Rich Froning is doing. Okay, so the Nano 13s retail at $140 to $150 right now. I expect that to go up to $160, maybe even $175, depending on a special edition model shoe. And for $140, I think that's just right in line with all of the other training shoes. We have Rads all the way up at $150 and Strike Movement Haze at $150. We have Nobles all the way down at $130 to $140. So these kind of just fit right in line with all of the other shoes. For that price, I think that the Nano 13s are a great CrossFit shoe. I do not think that these are as versatile of a training shoe overall as the Nano 12s were, which I think are a better running shoe, a better body weight shoe, uh, a better shoe for if you're not planning on lifting super heavy or anything, but for CrossFit, I think that the Nano 13s are far better than both of the previous two models. And this is considering the fact that most CrossFitters maybe run one time a week. And even then, when you're doing a running workout in CrossFit, it's maybe a mile in total. I think for those distances of running, the Nano 13s are gonna be fine. All of the other stuff in a typical CrossFit workout and a box that you're gonna be doing much more often, I think the Nano 13s do a really good job. Like burpees, I felt like these were plenty responsive and flexible, still pretty comfortable doing burpees. For box jumps and double unders, they were very responsive. For lifting movements, these are excellent shoes. They never get bogged down with the amount of cushioning that they had. They're once again, very stable. The lift chassis does a great job in stabilizing the heel. The durability seems much better than the previous two models as well. And so for a CrossFitter, I think the Nano 13s are an excellent option. So if you're looking for a pair of training shoes for the gym and you don't do CrossFit, maybe one of the previous models might be a better fit for you if you just wanted an all-in-one kind of shoe, something that you could run in, you could do some lifts in, you didn't necessarily want to do powerlifting or Olympic weightlifting in. Uh, I think the previous two models are probably the better buy, but if you are a CrossFitter and you're looking for a pair of CrossFit shoes, then I'd say the Nano 13s are one of the best shoes that you can get right now. They're awful to run in, but everything else they do pretty good to stellar when it comes to lifting. So if you're somebody that did CrossFit and you were turned off by the last two models of Nanos, then I definitely think that you should consider 
taking a look at the Nano 13. So if you have any questions about the Nano 13, feel free to leave them in the comment section. If you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. It helps a lot. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.